לא שומעים? כן, צריכה להגיד. או, אוקיי. Good morning everybody. Welcome to the second day of DLD. Hi. I'm Tal, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Evolero, the online platform you're using for this DLD. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed yesterday's sessions and events, and we're ready to start the second day. Our first session will be video, me, you, and the world too. Videos, as you probably noticed, are a strong uh, method of presenting yourself or what you do, a message or an idea. In this DLD, uh, we were powering uh, the online activities and I think it was almost 180 different videos that were uploaded by the event attendees. So everyone are using it, manifesting it, leveraging it for whatever they need to do to present themselves and it works great. Um, the, the host for today, today's session is Oded Vardi. Oded is a friend. Oded is a great advisor for every startup around us especially. He's also the gracious host of today's very cool party if every, uh, one of you attended it. And let me tell you a bit about him. Oded is an, an internet and new media entrepreneur and investor. For the past 16 years, he has been helping startups grow as a founder hands-on investor and advisor. Oded is a co-founder and president of Sup Superna, a pioneer and innovator in digital home enabling software and one of the world's first companies to launch HD video streaming products. He's also a renowned investor in many interesting and promising Israeli startups. So without further ado, I'm just going to invite Oded to start the panel. Please join us. Hi, good morning everybody. Everybody feeling all right? Everybody's good? Not too hungover? Because my mother is here. We're just playing Scrabble and board games yesterday. Nothing special. Uh, please allow me, we have an excellent panel, and please allow me to invite Ran Arnevo, Yoel Flo, and Uri Lebanon. So in this panel we have, um, it's actually three different uh, pieces of the video ecosystem. Video is a very, very broad subject. And we might talk a little bit about technology, but uh, we also have here three world-class experts in content. So uh, let's just start with a quick round of introduction. Ron, you want to go first? Hi, everyone. Uh, Ron Harnevo. I was the co-founder and CEO of a company called 5min uh, that was acquired by AOL um, three years ago. And uh, we basically created the video structure and strategy in AOL. Today I run video for AOL. Um, and today we're the second largest video network uh, in the US after YouTube um, with 1 billion views and 85 million consumers. And you said that you were acquired by AOL. Can you tell a little bit about uh, how your company looks today as part of uh, AOL? Yeah, so when we got acquired, we were uh, 50 employees. Um, today we are 250. Um, so AOL heavily invested in us post-acquisition, which was amazing. We had 20 people in Israel. We have 85 people in Israel right now, more or less. Um, <coughs> some of them are here. And it's uh, really the foundation, all the technology and the product um, of, of the whole network is being developed in Tel Aviv. Um, and then we have studios in LA and in New York, um, sales all over the US and Europe. And lately we acquired a company with an Israeli founder and CEO called Adapt TV. So we added another amazing company, 250 employees in San Francisco. Okay, so I think this is, by the way, a classic example of a very, very good acquisition and assimilation of Israeli company within a, a purchaser. The R&D center here grew, so it means money coming to Israel, more jobs, etc. They're all integrated. All three founders of uh, FIMIN are really big contributors to AOL video and technology strategy. Uh, Ran's partner, Hanan, is running the R&D center here. The other partner, Tal Simantov, is uh, running their uh, destination site, uh, AOL On. And uh, so three founders, there are three executives in AOL, keep growing uh, their idea, their business, and keep uh, employing good people. So uh, I think that's a classic example, and I'm sure Ron will be happy uh, to ask any questions uh, people have about that topic as well. Uri Levanon, introduce yourself. 
<coughs> Hi everyone, my name is Yuri. I uh, can say that I'm part of the YouTube uh, zoo, one of the animals there. I started a few channels uh, two and a half years ago and um, suddenly I discovered that I'm a horror lord. Uh, the horror channel I started uh, kind of as a joke became the biggest on YouTube and through that I came to work with a lot of producers and studios and creators all over the world not just in horror and what's called the fantastic genre horror sci-fi fantasy martial arts the genre film uh, then I decided I might uh, try to produce a movie uh, which is now in some festivals going around festivals over the world and now I'm uh, trying to take it to the next level and I guess in this aspect I can represent the people who started something on YouTube, managed to grow something quite, uh, you know, successfully in an interesting way on YouTube and now trying to go to the next level outside of YouTube. And that's an interesting topic in itself. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on uh, about uh, how big is your uh, network, how many views you had to date, etc.? The whole network is relatively a small network compared to other YouTube networks, but it's around 1 million daily views, which is nice for this uh, kind of uh, one-man show size. The horror channel is, is really the biggest. and It, it made a lot of uh, movies uh, virally, it become viral, and because of that they made the sequels and they you know, really got themselves known around the world. So that's, that's the main impact I think I, the channel has, has achieved. And how many people are in your company now? And how <laughs> many? Who are your investors? No, none. It's, it's uh, one guy doing his thing, eating falafel and trying to see okay. what happens. Yeah. So we will get back to that, but this is one guy who generated almost a billion uh, YouTube views in his uh, network. And he, I think that's a perfect business. No employees, no, no board of directors. That's, uh, that's a very stressful life. And uh, Joel, uh, Joel Flor, tell us a little bit about Hello. yourself. Hi. Um, up until last year, I was the, the head of digital for Shine Group. Shine Group is one of the largest TV production companies. Um, MasterChef, The Biggest Loser, The Office US. Um, overlooked the digital, the digital stuff. Um, that also included an online video business that we acquired. And by the end of last year, I decided that's way too cool not to be in that space. So I'm now on the other side of the pond, and we are launching an online video business together with two partners in the US. Um, the first one that we are announcing very soon is in the animation space um, and others to follow over the next few weeks and months. Thank you. Uh, and uh, where are you based out of? Well, I'm based out of London and my partners are in New York. And your name is uh, Yoel, which is a very Hebrew name. Uh, where, where did you get that name? Well, my mother is from here. So, yeah. Okay, excellent. So maybe now we will try to make you do Aliyah. No, I'm just I'm not into Aliyah propaganda, no worries. It's, it's not going to be hard to convince me, trust me. Excellent. So uh, we have uh, the, the one guy operation that from one computer reaches people all over the world. We have the technology slash content uh, company that is part of a big uh, organization. We have the man from the cool kid on the production company side who is now starting uh, the own startup. So it's all different approaches. I'm very curious to hear from you guys because everybody today watches video on TV. Everybody watches video on the internet. Uh, sometimes it's YouTube uh, clips, what I learned from Laurent, the term cats on skateboards. Uh, but sometimes it's very, that as a generic name for the genre. But there's also production uh, quality content, uh, especially oil is doing a lot uh, on that. That's probably their focus. So let's say two, three, five years from now, how we will watch video? I mean, because we can only envision maybe what we're doing now. What's, what's next? So from the user experience perspective, of course. Um, Intel, I think, I think it was Intel, they launched uh, a research and they claim that in three years from now, 90% of time spent on the internet is watching videos, which is really a crazy uh, number, it includes Netflix and a lot of VOD and connected TVs, etc. Um, I, I think that connected TV is really the most interesting thing moving forward in terms of um, really where everything is going because we are all used to the fact that everyone can develop into a phone. People have conversation in a coffee shop, especially in Tel Aviv. A month afterwards they launch an app and it's, it, it looks extremely um, reasonable. Although until 2008, no one could have done that. Um, and I know from a few, like Samsung, Google, Apple, 
maybe Intel, everyone works on app stores on TV, which means that pretty soon people will have an idea and they would be able to upload it and put it on, on the app store. So if you produce content on YouTube, soon enough people would be able to consume you on the big screens. Um, I, I think that would be the biggest revolution yeah. in this industry for like all the people, all the big companies as we know them are going to struggle significantly when this happens. And can you share a little bit about, as somebody who's responsible for all of AOL's uh, video strategy, can you share a little bit about your not too confidential plans on what you guys are building, how are you guys preparing for this? So we've bet on connected TVs two years ago. We took a team, we put them aside and we told them just to go. And we gave them a significant amount of money. Today we're pre-installed in every, almost every manufacturer, LG, Panasonic, Samsung, um, Toshiba, Sharp, like if you buy the TV, we already have an app there. Uh, we have a huge partnership with Roku, Boxy, and I hope that Apple TV would be the last one. So we're all over the place, but it's really, really fragmented. And right now only the people with the, good, with the big pockets can create distribution in, in, in such a scale. We have already 4 million Americans watching us monthly on TVs. 4 uh, million only in America? Only in America. And that's a huge number. I mean, if you think about it, it's only on connected TVs. And the only friction there is that it's too complicated right now to do it. Like, you need to go, you need to have a deal with Toshiba, you need to have a deal with Samsung. You need, and I know that everyone is working on getting rid of it. We got into original productions heavily this year. We invested a lot of money, we launched 15 shows, we're going to do more next year. And we are starting to create longer and longer forms because we know that it's coming on the big screen. And I, I, the minute it happens, you need to have a meaningful library. You can start producing. Because if you happens. say even if my TV is connected, I have to have enough uh, things to watch. Yeah, yeah that's. Uh, I think this is actually a problem that we all know that sometimes we go to the TV with the phone, with the TV, etc., and we cannot uh, find something good. Or maybe it's out there and we cannot reach it, but maybe um, it's not enough uh, quality content yet. So we're hearing a lot is happening there. And, we'll and the cable companies are starting the war. I mean, the war has started. So cable companies are aggressively saving their ecosystem. They're closing deals for 10, 15 years because they know it's coming. So all the technology folks can come with whatever cool technology they have. If, there's not, if, if, the, if there won't be good content in the offering, people would still pay for cables. Thanks. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, Uli, where do you see the future as the yeah. kind of the, the guy who built the business very quickly? The future on the is horrible. Horror. Yeah. Um, so I agree with uh, Ron completely about the big screen and speci specifically about the premium content. But looking at so you agree or disagree? Agree. But agree people didn't come here to see you agree. No, no, people but came now to I'm see you to disagree. Fight no, no, a little but, bit. But from my perspective, which is more about watching video clips, I think the main thing that is definitely going to shape is the inter interweaving the video into chat messaging. It's already happening big time on WhatsApp. There are all kinds of applications coming up. We have in Israel Envy and uh, Stevie trying to merge you know, the social aspect, the, the watching video clips and the social aspect. YouTube is going there. I mean, if you're a partner, you can see exactly where the, what's the next thing they're trying to target with the connection to Google+, Plus, which they really try to make you use. But it will happen because Google+, Plus is really becoming a good tool. So from the perspective of watching clips, I think the messaging, the social aspect, and also new ways to actually interact with people through video. You see all these new tools like uh, Vine and Instagram and Mixbeat coming from the YouTube founders trying to make it much, much easier for people to actually convey themselves with a video. So I think that's, that's kind of the place where the, the, the short clips are going to. And part of the conversation, part of the messaging. And are you doing now um, in your uh, network uh, and other activities, are you doing anything from that direction, integrating the content with more uh, social feature, uh, social discoverability, etc.? Uh, well, I think I can tell you what, what is being discussed amongst the YouTube networks in LA. Everybody is, is asking themselves, okay, what are we going to do with social? Because how are we going to develop our own tools? Are we going to acquire companies? Are we going to launch our sp special app? I think for me, the, I need to figure out how to target the audience, uh, you know, the specific audience that's interested in 
the content I am publishing and how can I offer great ways and great experience to communicate between be, be, for communication between people using the content or around the content yeah. and uh, obviously naturally it's something for uh, startups to figure out and then the content publishers will come and use it yeah, so you say the innovation will come from startups and then the content people will just see it completely uh, there's amazing opportunities now for startups around mobile video messaging and there it's already happening we yeah. see yeah. And and actually I think is, is an interesting startup in Israel to watch for it and this is actually something we're going to elaborate in uh, just in a little a few minutes. So, uh, Yoel, and you would love to hear what you think about the user experience, how the whole video experience will look in a couple of years. So, um, unfortunately, I agree as well. It's um, connected. Also, to agree. Is, it's definitely an important part well, of let it. Me, let me uh, let me apologize to the um, audience. Next year, we will find people but, with more obvious, uh, evident conflicts. Um, but there are a couple of elements. Like, if I look at the TV habits today, what I see very clearly is that. Um, what drives us is a lot of laziness. So what wins at the moment is the most convenient sitting back, turning on the TV, and then if you really look at user behavior at the moment, all of them are using their phone, and a lot of the industry is pushing like second screen apps and all of that stuff. Reality is, I don't know if you look at yourself, what you're doing on the second screen is most likely not related to the stuff that you're doing on TV. So that's one of the first challenges that we realized um, and that means we need to be adaptive in terms of what is the content that you deliver over the different platforms that are coming up at the moment. So what we are trying to figure out is kind of what is the right content for the right platform. What are you going to consume on your mobile? What are you going to consume on the TV screen? Um, and how is that going to fit together? By the way, what is TV going to be in five years from now? Like if you're, if you're saying I'm going to watch TV, what does it mean? Like is it a movie? Is it a TV show? Is it the big screen in the living room? All of these are the kind of things which we are hopefully going to figure out over the next few years. I think as of now, it's relatively unclear for me. Okay, and uh, well, for, I have to say now I agree also because I think it's very much unclear and I also don't think personally that uh, these things are uh, written in the stars and just, just waiting for somebody to do it, but it really depends on what creative people come and invent and do uh, to, to change the reality. 